Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench, we have a a Itron 600 uh, frequency thing. Actually, it's a frequency counter, eh, I believe. And I think this one's going to be kind of cool since we have Nixie tubes. I believe this is a Nixie tube frequency counter. Looks right. I haven't been in this particular unit yet, so what we, I don't know what we're going to find. Um, I don't know if this is discrete drive or if this is going to have ICs in it or not. Um, we'll see what kind of uh, age we get out of it. And we'll bring it back to life if it is struggling to function. This particular frequency counter is destined for a lab that is not here. But uh, I was requested that I go through it for its future owner and bring it up to par if anything is not working. So that's what we're going to do today. To get this thing out of the case, it's actually open on the back. So it looks like we could have some BNCs here. Line cord, nice handle, big chunky handle back there. It's already loose, actually. Um, what we would have had to do is pop two screws off, unclamp it, and then it'll slide forward. So this, oh, that was ter terrible. So there we go. Let's take a look and see what this thing, other than uh, vintage dust, we've got going on inside. So things of immediate notice, we have our display tubes up at the front. There are some neons for the indicators on the front panel. The front plastic is kind of loose. I'm going to have to, we will, oh yeah, the glue's failed. But that'll give us a good, uh, to clean this and get this all polished up. We'll take care of that. We do have some interesting construction. That looks like a rectifier of some sort. Here's going to be our time base. That's a crystal. I uh, don't know if it's 110 or um, 5 megahertz yet. These are the Nixie drivers. Oh, we have some friends, so we'll be ev evicting some tenants. Uh, do we have a date code? 36th week of 71? So, 32nd week, 32nd week. Yeah, so it looks like uh, 1971 vintage. These, resi these power resistors actually look okay. Nothing's too black and toasted there. Big screws. These are probably capacitors. Um, I bet you there's some caps on the bottom of the board. We'll take a look at that. We will measure the ripple across those caps and see if they need to be replaced. Um, i got to figure out what kind of caps these are. Probably a poly-style capacitor. Although I did notice this one has a potential blowhole in it, so we may need to replace that. Probably will replace that. And then we'll give all the others a, a good inspection. Oh, wow. There is some absolutely humongous caps under here. Uh, we have the... Uh, so... Uh, given the topology, I'd probably say plus minus supplies, and then maybe a 5 volt. So plus minus 15, and then a 5 volt supply, maybe. Uh, looks like we have... Let's see. Signal processing happens. BNC inputs come in. And signal processing goes to this this board first. We have some more tenants we'll need to evict, which is fine. We are going to have to take care. There are going to be some spicy supplies in here due to the fact that this is a Nixie, um, Nixie tube unit. It's going to have some high voltage, which will be fine. Uh, I do not like these capacitors. These will get replaced. These are um, across the AC line coming in. Uh, those need to be safety caps, so those will go. We'll see what we can do about cleaning up those switches. 
on the switchboard. And, well, we'll get into it and see what we can do to make it work. Okay, let's give it a, uh, we have our new cap put in and our, uh, oh, our safety caps put in on the power rail. So let's give it a power on and see what happens. No smoke. Oh, we have digits. Hang on a second, let me move the camera down. Okay. Well, we have digits and we have a ready light. So let's see if we can reset. No. Yes. All right, so I don't have this film put in yet. But there is all our Nixie tubes. Before we ch check and see if it's counting, it looks like it should want to try to count. Let's check the ripple on the uh, capacitors and see how bad our AC is. If that's high, we will uh, replace the caps. I don't expect that to be too high. These are really substantial capacitors, and this is a um, linear power supply. There's, big tra there's a transform in the back, so we don't have a very high ripple current on this one, but uh, we'll give it a shot. To check that, we'll just flip this over. Uh, uh, no, we don't need to. We do it from this side. Never mind. All right. So we'll check DC rails first. Uh, DC, let's check this first cap. First cap, the first big cap is, looks like eight volts. 23 volts, and also 23 volts. So we have plus minus 23 volts and an 8 volt supply, which is kind of what we were expecting. So let's kick this over to AC. And what do we have on the 8 volt supply, which has that really big cap? Uh, 78 millivolts of ripple. On the 23 volt supplies, 85 millivolts. And 84 millivolts, so minimal ripple. Uh, everything is good there. So those caps can actually stay. They're not gonna be much of a problem. So what's next? Um, well, let's see if it actually counts first. And then we'll put it in the case. This For alignment, it only has one function, uh, one, one adjustment, really. That's the time base. We'll see how far it's off. I'm going to use my uh, 2000 series uh, Rigel function generator, which is backed up by the rubidium. So we have a very stable clock coming out of the function gen. And we'll just align it to that, and it should be good to go. I could easily align it to my uh, time base unit and that wouldn't be a problem there but this will be fine so let me get a cable and we'll figure out well, i'll just do this in real time let's see we'll just pick up a cable here go to input a and we will set a frequency of 10 megahertz, 10 megahertz on 10 megahertz, and not bad. We're off by like 3 megahertz on 10 megahertz, but it's, nothing's even warmed up yet, so not horrible. Um, let's see if we slow it down it should overflow. Nope. It's only not going to overflow because the time base is running slightly slow. So we're running about 25, 25 hertz low. Let's see, this is kilohertz. So point. Yeah, 25 hertz. So, so the clock's off by about 25 hertz. Not too bad for just a cap and a crystal. Uh, really. 
also considering it's not an ovenized crystal. Like this is about so time base in this particular unit uh, was a, the fact that it was a crystal is incredibly good for the time, but nowhere near a stable time base. I mean, even today we use ovenized crystals and time bases and things like that. So fantastic for its age and probably hasn't been adjusted in years, uh, but not the most stable time base, but very much good enough for this device. Okay. I just need to tweak this to a little bit more. Oh, too much. That's exactly where I needed it. Nine, 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 nine. And that's come down when I remove the tool, but it's come down by five. So let's make this. Let me get a low capacitance tuning tool. Even that little tab of metal was a bit too much capacitance and drug around the reference oscillator a little bit. There we go. So we will use fully ceramic. You have to get on this capacitor. This is not the easiest thing to do in the case. We are dead on 10 megahertz, so let's make this 1 kilohertz. And we'll back this out to 10 seconds, and we'll see how our clock is doing. That's pretty good. Let's make it 100 kilohertz because that's the best definition I can, or that is the largest value I can get with a 10 second gate time. We'll let it cycle once. Now it gated, so we'll let it run one more time. You can tell when it gates right here when the gate light flashes. And you want to read right after the gate happens. So this is now bang on. I am good with that. And we will call that a day. So a couple of neat things this counter can do. Um, it can accumulate, which is essentially just a counter. So it'll just count things. Uh, we have a nice attenuator, 1x attenuator up to 100k attenuator uh, internal or external time base the if i hook this up i can put a, a time base in b and it'll use that as an external reference uh, we have store mode on or off if i turn store mode off we'll actually see it count which is pretty cool it'll reset now you're seeing it count with the gate time And then it holds. Now, this sample rate is the uh, essentially hold time. If I turn it down to min, what it'll do is it will hold this number for quite a long time. It's still getting signal in, but it's not actually counting until it resets, which it'll do right now. And then you can tell it to count and then pause by just setting it there. And then if you hit uh, I think it should start. And now it'll do one count cycle. Stop. And then if I hit reset and then manual again, it'll go to ready. Now it'll start counting again once the next gate cycle comes around. So, very cool. Let's check uh, input C 
just to make sure. Uh, we do have counting on input C. see what that does actually because This has got to have some kind of pre-divider because it's reading. I'm feeding in 100 kilohertz, but I'm reading like 3 megahertz. Which is strange. What's input B do? Um, I can't read B directly. Okay, so B is not working, but let's do, let's put in 100 megahertz on C and see what happens. Uh, five megahertz. Yeah, it's reading it right. Yeah. So when it's when the signal's fast enough, it's triggering correctly on the um input C. So everything does look like it's working on the front of the unit. Uh and there is no I can do comparisons A to B, but there is no um direct readout of time base B. So all in all, everything is working. And uh, there's got to be a divider in there. So it'll let you, you it'll let you do higher frequencies. So input C on this unit will allow you to do longer time bases at higher frequencies to get better accuracy. So not horrible. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at this ITRON 600 Nixie Tube frequency counter. This one's ready to go back to, uh, well, it's not ready to go back to, it's ready to go to its new owner and uh, hopefully give them lots of years on the bench. Wasn't a lot to this unit. Everything was good to go. A little bit of standard cleanup just because of its age. Uh, this unit is pushing 50, over 50 years old at this point, and everything's still running good. I'm really glad I didn't have to replace any of the Nixie drivers or the Nixie tubes. Sourcing those would have been difficult at best. But everything's ready to go, and uh, it's cruising. So going to get this buttoned up, and we'll get into the next video. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. I will see everybody down in the comments. More is always on the way, and I'll be here in the next video.